there are a number of things that are very human-like and some that are not so human-like. So starting with his head on here, he has stereo vision. The interocular distance is comparable to humans, which means his depth perception is somewhat human-like. Uh, less human-like is this rotating laser sensor in his forehead that gives us uh, reliable three-dimensional information. See, so working our way down, there's the Iron Man-like computer in his chest here. That's responsible for uh, essentially the lower brain functions, the servo controls on the arms, uh, the some real-time balance. Uh, things that have mostly to do with body dynamics. Uh, and then the upper levels of, if I dare call it his primitive brain, are actually external computers. So he has not so human like a tether coming out the back, a big cable that carries uh, cooling, water, uh, three phase, 480 volt power, and fiber optic communications. That's the connection right now to his external brain, essentially. The legs are actually pretty powerful. Um, I would say probably in his thighs here. Uh, he's able to do a fairly deep knee bend and raise himself up. Uh, he can lift most of his weight on one foot fairly deeply, even though he weighs uh, oh, 150 kilograms, so he's pretty beefy. His joints are hydraulic. The original robots were hydraulic. Uh, they had plenty of lift capacity. You'll see things like earth movers, dump trucks, backhoes cranes, those are hydraulic because you get such power out of it. But that has a downside as well. When we power them up, you'll hear his compressor. It sounds like an uh, air raid warning siren. There are fluids. Uh, we, there's a hydraulic fluid. Actually, it's not too bad. It's pretty eco-friendly. They, they say you could ingest it. We haven't chosen to put it on our salads, but every time a piston comes out and retracts again, it wipes off a little more of that fluid. So. The more he works, the more he sweats.